everybody and welcome to Creative Minds. This is episode four. Today we are interviewing a very good friend of mine and also a filmmaker. Oh uh, yeah, my name is uh, William Kermot, uh, also the person in charge of MVF Zydinian. Also it's going to be changing probably to Kermot Cinema, so just watch out for that. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of a name change. It was a little bit shaky when I first made the channel. channel was originally going to be music videos from Zydinian, but I never actually put out mm-hmm. any music videos I put out there, so <laughs> it just kind of stuck <laughs> like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, I always personally liked the name Zidinian. It, it's it's very sleek and very professional, but it also has like a little fun tinge to it. But yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. What first introduced you to filmmaking? Back when I was around 12 years old or 11, my sister started playing with this program my dad got from an interview, and the program was called Vegas Pro 7. Having this program, she was able to take clips from videos that she shot and then piece them together. And I looked at it and I thought, well, this is kind of boring. And I just walked out and forgot about it. And then after a while, I saw what she could do with this program. You could take little pieces of footage and piece them around. You could take something that was Mm -hmm. completely unrelated to whatever you're talking about and make it related to what the video is. Uh, But I tried the program out that time and I started editing videos and started getting familiar with the way it worked. And then eventually I got my own camera when I was about 13 or 14. It was a little point and shoot camera, but it was still something. And I made a bunch of little videos. Robin Wars was one of them. Still have it on the computer. I just don't choose to show it. (laughs) Right. That's fair enough. But yeah, my sister introducing me to that program was how I started off filmmaking. I feel like a lot of people just start off because they're like, hey, this is cool and this is new. Let's try this. How do you feel about your uh, your equipment that you're currently using? And how do you feel that that impacts you as a filmmaker? Are you limited at all? Yeah, I would say I am very limited. The equipment I have right now is enough to get me going and to get me familiar with how to use the equipment properly. But mm-hmm. I don't have like, I don't have the full set. So I have, I have some LED lights, yeah. but I don't have an environment light. I don't have a proper uh, micro, like microphones to be used properly for whatever scenario it is. The equipment I have, I'm happy with. I'm fine with it. But I would like to get uh, more equipment in the future that I can use to better the skills and also to make the videos look a lot better in terms of filmmaking. One day. What's the first thing you're going to update? The next thing I'm going to get is probably going to be an environment light because I have a microphone, but this microphone that I have actually turns out not to be catching a lot of sound, unfortunately. Environment light, I can't remember the name of it specifically, but I'm taking a look at this one light. And then after that would be a better microphone. I can't quite choose which one yet. Your equipment that you have now, would you say that that is a creative struggle for you? Like not having all of the equipment that you want, even though it still works and it's fully functional. I guess perfection, it's not quite the right word that I'm looking for, but the quality that you're looking for in your films. In the most recent video I did on the channel, uh, the Kermot Studios channel, uh, Emperor Cusco Poison Scene, I really loved the video. I thought it was great. The only problem with it was that there was some shots that we shot literally like three to a month, not four months, four weeks later. And so when it came to edit the whole thing, it was it was done, but we needed some insert shots. And the lighting wasn't accurate because I didn't bring my lights out. Prior to actually filming the entire video, it would have been nice to have like an environment light to get, to get the entire room lit. So I didn't have to, yeah. So I didn't have to have my ISO cranked up Mm -hmm. to what, 1800 or something. Ew. Really really bad. Yeah. But the lights do, uh, do help bring it down just a little bit. But that's like, I never like going above like two or 300. See, if you wouldn't have said anything, I wouldn't have noticed. So it's kind of funny how like from a creator's perspective, it's like, I see all these flaws, but when you're a new viewer seeing it for the first time, you barely Yeah, you should see look that. at them. Look at the, the footage and then give me a, the time codes of all the ones you think that were uh, shot five, sorry, four weeks later. There's some of them that you can really mm-hmm. tell because there's a, I'll just tell you there's a curtain in one of the shots and then there's a curtain in another shot. Would you say that you have any other creative struggles? One of them would have to be having plenty of actors. The people that I have around me are really great. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've got my brother, my sister, and my younger brother. But when I want to make something really good, like an actual film, I need to have someone or some way to find people. I'm going to look into that sometime in the Mm -hmm. future. To have different types of people to come into the videos. To start off, I think it would be safer to start with people you know. So actors, definitely. It's especially great when you know the people because you know like what their strengths are, you know. Mm-hmm. and which role you think yeah. would be best to put them in. Have you gotten to the point yet where you're uh, 
have ever rented equipment for a specific uh, film you're making? Not yet. You looked into it, though? Not yet. You're like, hmm, that would be interesting. Well, I've been around certain equipment that I've wanted to try out for myself to see what it's like, like the Canon C300 or the RED camera, which is super expensive to even purchase, let alone, you know, know, rent. Try trying to rent out the C300 and eventually save up and actually get it if I need to. It's a full sensor, so I was like, you know, might as well try what that looks like. But yes, I would really like to do that, especially lights Mm -hmm. or microphones or anything else like that that'd be kind of fun to do money though man and people you need like a boom boom pole guy oh yeah, i know yeah. yeah struggles man that's a hard job just saying nobody wants to do it <laughs> you have to have some nice tricep strength Ooh. keep it up there for like 15 minutes gets really really hard <laughs> Whenever I talk to creative people, it's always very interesting to me personally to ask this question. What is your creative process? So like, are you talking about like uh, how I come up with an idea and how I go forward with that idea? Yeah, basically. It's very random in a sense. It's But it it follows a pattern. Uh, Sometimes when I'm at work, I'll have this idea Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I'll jot it down and then I'll kind of save it for later. Sometimes my brothers are doing something and I'm like, ooh, I want to film that. Like the Master Trials. That was actually based off of an actual real choreographed fight my brother did with my other brother and so they're recording it and i said or they're they're fighting and i said i want to record you guys but let's do in like a costume and started to get really serious and eventually it turned into the master trials as you know today just because mm-hmm. some people were having fun there is one short film that i am planning to do in probably five years but i have an actual writer so like my sister is going into writing so i'm having her write Ooh. the script of it just working with her and to collaborate to get an idea for what this short film is going to be about how the actor or the, the main character is going to go through this and then she just really goes off with the rest and i don't have to worry about it too much so that brings a load off my shoulders but of course after coming up with that idea you you shoot it and then you edit the thing and hopefully you you come with the product that you imagined when you first thought of it. Sometimes it just doesn't go as planned. And you're like, well, this was this is not how I imagined it at all. So I'm sure all the viewers and listeners, listeners here are wondering, hey, I really want to see your first videos and how you started on it how can Ooh. i see that please sir let me see <laughs> you want to see my very first <laughs> films that i made when i was like 14 years old yeah uh, i'm would, afraid would people cool. will be bored they would not even watch it <laughs> i i could i very well can um if you guys Second want channel. i'd probably do a stream because i will not put the videos up i'll have to find all of the, the videos there are some I, i'm actually very proud of i will i'll have to tell you this but i can't find them now because Someone had to wipe a hard drive or two. What is your favorite video you've created so far? I have two videos that I'm very proud of. That They're kind of neck and neck. I love the Master Trials. There's actually like a hidden message in there if you guys never even caught it. But Ooh. the lot of the, the different types of elements that I accumulated over maybe like a year or so, trying out with 3D modeling and mm-hmm. to make a lightsaber float and to make it look like it's going towards a camera. That was so cool. It, yeah. it was so fun. I had it all imagined in my mind. I had to throw a stick to get my brother to pretend to grab the lightsaber so that it would flow mm-hmm. into my mind of where his hand would be and it, it turned out well it turned out pretty well the only problem was the bad guy stopped to watch him and that bugged me but that one the master trials and then also the switch my life video that i actually got in the top 10 for that competition so Whoa. i did make it in there nice um, it didn't yeah. end up that's cool ended up being me it ended up being a kid from ireland i was oh. like oh good props the kid was like seven. the ireland kids so, but the reason it was that video was because there were so many special sound effects like the door ringing mm-hmm. we actually had to go in the office to dub over our voices the part where we're all looking out of the door at this box Mm -hmm. i go what is it she goes it's a box and my brother's like it's the nintendo switch as the camera's panning down i just muted that whole thing and then we recorded it and i had them listen to themselves over and over and over again until they could say it my sister took i think three or four tries my brother i think he did it like twice and that was it the first one i ended up using because he did such a great job and then i added some background noise of like cars going past and stuff like that Mm mm-hmm yeah. And the video was just very professionally done uh, in that sense of using like all these elements to make it feel like an actual, you know, setting. That was probably one of my favorite videos as far as professionalism and Master Trials as far as like VFX. <laughs> I'm sure everybody here is wondering, what do your brothers and uh, sister think of uh, being on all these videos? Do they ever get tired of being uh, like, oh, another video we got to act in? Or are they like very hyped? It's a very good question, actually. It kind of depends <laughs> what's in it for them. 
sort of. Oh, uh, okay. so, all right. So they, it's not exactly like a, I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of thing, but sometimes I'm like really into this video and I'm like getting everything ready to go and they're like, can we just not do this today? And so I really have to kind of push them. I'm like, come on guys, let's do this. Sometimes I'll just record by myself and then just film their parts later so that they're not in there all the time but for the nintendo switch one they were actually like pretty much into it they're like let's see how this video goes you know they want mm-hmm. they're kind of in there uh some it's kind of depends though sometimes they are sometimes they aren't it really depends on what the mm-hmm. video is if they have a good part right. if they have a boring part it's kind of like that but overall they're they're pretty pretty good about I'm, it i'm kind of upset that i didn't think of that question because <laughs> that's a really good question <laughs> that's good and question. that's one of the reasons why i don't have other people in my videos i just do everything myself because honestly, I'm the kind of person where it's like, I don't want to rely on other people when it comes to creating projects, because then it's the hassle of managing everybody's time. And then it's the hassle of like, yeah, it's time consuming. It, 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 it bugs me. It, it's just like, I'd rather do this because I know what I'm doing. And if I'm in control, then I know what I'm, you know. Control freak. Yeah, I get you. Like for the, the Emperor's New Groove one, when we were ent- finishing up the filming a lot of people were taking a lot of time to get into costume and to just get everything Mm -hmm. set up and so it was really aggravating for everyone to be telling me what to do when i know what i'm doing and they're like let's film it right now but i'm like okay the situation isn't fully there yet we need to Mm -hmm. we need to wait for this person to get into costume and then so it does get really complicated when people want to do what they want to do and you want to get what you want to get done in your opinion who is the best filmmaker between me myself and you guys <laughs> me, myself and you guys that's, well that's, i meant I'm i meant tuber. as in like a big budget film maker I, i'm not talking about just youtube i'm saying like overall so yeah. like, like uh it'll reiterate the question who is a filmmaker that inspires you oh that's a very good question i mean there's a lot there's a lot of people <laughs> you know you're, fi- yeah. you're familiar with film right they uh they do a lot of like teaching and stuff about films they do like these little things I was looking into what their stuff had to offer, and I eventually started following the channel Corridor Digital that put a lot of stuff out there. Don't recommend them entirely, mm-hmm. but their short films are really high quality for the type of work they put into it. It's it's really good. So, man, there's some others out there too, but I, I've adapted a lot of techniques from them. I guess I guess I have to ask the question that we've all been waiting for. Oh boy, where's the new video, Zydinian? The new video. Oh, you guys are gonna <laughs> love this. Okay, so uh, Master Eth already knows. I'm putting out a teaser trailer sometime, like a teaser video. It's just like a little teaser. Uh, it's not going to be very long. Ooh. It's going to be like less than a minute. But essentially, mm-hmm. it's going to give the sense and feel of this short series I'm going to be doing. It's not a film. It's a series. It's the videos are probably going to be about five to ten minutes long at most it's gonna be a very short budgeted film and all we're really doing is practically making fun of star wars the (laughs) the entire thing just making fun of it from the kessel run even though solo pretty much covered that um all the way down to the little itty bitty of force everything's just been made fun of i have the beginning planned out and the end which the end is going to be the best ending i've probably ever seen in one of my videos so far it's it's horrific and it's going to be awesome. It, everything that leads up to the point of the entire series is just going to be so awing. It's, I hope I hope the viewers are just going to be like, whoa, I did not see that coming. Well, hopefully they did. I am very interested so now. So the, the, <laughs> the show was actually, is actually called The Holocron Crisis because it was based off of The Holocron Crisis. Now, the Holocrons go missing and the Master and his apprentice are sent out to find them. And so that's basically all you really need to know at this moment. But there's a lot of character development throughout the entire thing. There's things you know about the master that's important and the things about the villain Whoa. that is very important. And it just gets cooler and cooler the more you go. And like the more I think about this series and the more I work into it, I'm just thinking, man, I just want to shoot it now. I just need to get the actors, gonna get everything <laughs> done and just shoot yeah. this thing. The short video will probably come out, if not this week, next week. Um, I'm probably gonna go and shoot it now. Whoa. Yes, it's I'm very excited for this one. It's gonna be a very nice break from doing nothing. I am interested very much so, because I is notification squad. I'm turning into notification squad just of you talking about it. What's your favorite movie? and why i have a couple doctor strange and the great wall the reason why i say doctor strange and the great wall is because of the storytelling basicness of it the heroes have something they love or they were trying to do like doctor strange 
how he was a doctor. I'm mm-hmm. assuming anyone who listens to this is familiar with it. So I'm just going to assume that. Spoiler alert mm-hmm. if you haven't seen yeah. it. Uh, the Great Wall also follows that. Now, it The Great Wall did get a very low review from Rotten Tomatoes, but like Rotten Tomatoes can even rank anything. <laughs> so just saying that Rotten Tomatoes is a very bad job because they're rotten. Shots fired. Doctor Strange goes through a similar character development like Iron Man, but Iron Man still says, stays that arrogant. Mm-hmm you know, jerk that he is. The Doctor Strange changes from this arrogant hothead to like a, you know, not really hothead, more like a arrogant rich guy Mm -hmm. to this guy who has to choose between giving up what he loves to do and doing something he knows is right. Does he sit there and just get money all day or does he actually go out there to help the world? And the best scene in that entire film is when he confronts Dormammu and he says, Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. He says that over and over again. A lot of people were like, yep, that was the easiest scene shot in the entire movie. But it was very important mm-hmm. because he put his own life on the line and said, I am willing to do this as long as it takes. Yeah. And he was willing to die for it. And he did die over and over and over again. If that's the only part you take away from that movie, take that part away. The hero put his life on the line and that why that's mo- that movie is so awesome and also the great wall because they follow the same principles so who is your favorite movie director there's not very many directors i follow per se i'm familiar with like you know peter jackson i can't remember the guy who but if there's anyone that i would probably pick it would have to be the guy from the ragnarok because of the what the people said about him as he was directing and he was just kind of like a fun guy to hang around with like everybody liked the director and i think as a director you kind of want that for people to like you right not like in the sense of like oh yeah you know director so and so was like the big man or whatever but it's like as you're directing you can get people to like you know just listen to you they're they're gonna want to listen because Mm -hmm. you're so fun that would be one thing i would like to do is to like you know learn how do you do this you know how how can you be a fun director for people Mm -hmm. to you know, sit and listen to when they want to do other stuff. But I yeah, mean, you got Steven Spielberg. Yeah, you got Steven Spielberg. I mean, he's directing, you know, Ready Player One, but he's he's a really good director. I'll give him that. Great techniques. I mean, over the years, very skilled in what he does. So, so this is this is one I've been wondering of all filmmakers. This kind of uh, disconnect between filmmakers and and uh, you know tubers and uh, Vimeo people, mm-hmm. Daily Motion even. Um, and then you know, if you're a filmmaker, you don't really like talk you know sit and talk to the camera i mean i know you made one video like that but i do feel like more filmmakers should become like tubers and vice versa would be kind of cool like uh casey neistat did that in a pretty cool way but uh first of all why do you choose youtube mate why do you stay on youtube and not like the other platforms do you do you ever describe yourself as a, as a tuber why i chose youtube was because it was readily available not very many yeah. people are familiar with Vimeo and the other one I've actually never heard of the other one that you uh, spoke of uh, Vimeo you have to have an account for in order to watch with YouTube you have to have an account oh. in order to comment mm-hmm. but YouTube was more open and readily available for me to just you know go in and you know use my Gmail account and poof I have it uh, I've seen a lot of professional people on YouTube uh, more than I have on Vimeo Do you consider yourself a tuber ever I would I say kind of sorta not a dedicated one like Master E Oh wow you okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you guys you guys are very out there you know you're putting content out there almost like every week my issue is not being able to get stuff out there <laughs> because mm-hmm. Because I have no idea why. I well, to be sure. to be fair, your I think your content is better than both of ours combined. So Thank you know, you. there's oh, that. Yeah. It takes way you know longer I mean? to. It does. I would like to be a YouTuber and eventually, hopefully, get a job something similar to to it. I mean, I've had some people mm-hmm. come up to me and say, "Hey, I want this video done. Are you interested?" And I was like, "Sure, yeah. Just let me know more about it, and I can get you right back." And, uh, that's gonna be more like a 45 minute film like thing. So. Right, yeah. I don't know when that's going to take place, but it is a it is a job thing. That sounds awesome. If I'm a YouTuber, I would say yeah, I'm, I'm a YouTuber, but not a very 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 dedicated one. Do you have any future creative plans? Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh yes, I do. It's going to take a lot of time, mm-hmm. a lot of money, and a lot of effort. The short film that I plan to do in about five years, that's like, is going to take a lot of ingenuity, creativity, and collaboration. And I'm working with my sister to help write the script up. I'm trying to figure out yeah. plot lines and, you know, things I can do in that area. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of RWO, which if some people don't know, you should watch Rob for that. I want to get that done. I want to get mm-hmm. that shot and completed. It's really good. And I've got the Holocron Crisis that I'm going to be putting out there sometime in the near future. But yes, I do have a lot to look forward to mm-hmm. and it's just gonna take a lot to get there so 
Well, I gotta say, thank you for having me on this uh, the stream here, or this uh, this podcast. Podcast, yeah, no problem. It was yeah, a lot podcast. of fun. Pod- yeah, well, podcast was- life. I know, right? Yeah, I always Hopefully love got- to. Yeah, I always love to talk to other creative people. I appreciate you. your yeah. time of you being here. I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. It was interesting to hear someone like, "Hey, I always want to like interview you." I was like, "Oh, oh boy, oh boy, Ooh, how professional, right?" <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? It's like, oh man, this is good. I'm, st- awesome. I'm still nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where can people find you? I would assume your YouTube channel, right? For sure. Yeah. I'll be sure to link it in the description. You guys need to go check this guy out. Seriously, he makes really amazing stuff. Definitely watch the Master Trials because that that was amazing. Also that in Twitter, I don't really post a lot on Twitter, but mm-hmm. when the Master Trials actually comes out, I'll be doing right. that. Thank you everybody for listening to episode four of Creative Minds. Will has been a very, very great guest, I would have to say. And we will see you in two weeks. Remember, stay creative. <laughs>my goal is to make more silence (laughs) (laughs) ah maybe i shouldn't even have you in the podcast then if that's the case but my questions are